Hello, hello, my name is Andrew Campbell from the YMIT, and today I'm going to do the set review for Fire and Opus 20. I'm going to dive right in because I'm running slightly behind on time. Um, Arden is far more interesting than anything we had seen in Opus 19 for Fire. He has the unique effect of when he enters the field, you may put two of your backups into the break zone. And if you do so, you turn over one card at a time until you reveal two characters other than card name Arden. And then you play them onto the field and shuffle the other cards and put them on the bottom of your deck. Now, to get the most out of Arden, you're going to have to utilise absolutely immaculate deck building skills. You're going to have to balance running lots of singletons along with kind of trying to maximise your summon suite so you can always hit the power cards off this guy. I feel Water Fire might be a really good suit for him just because you can use cards like Leviathan or Artemision to kind of help fine tune your hand or like, well, especially with the Leviathan from Opus 10 that I mentioned there, being able to stack the top of your deck before you play him. He is not just a fling into every deck. You're going to have to be very, very considerate in how you play him and what you play with him. But I think that makes him quite charming. Um, I, I just love this effect. And being able to hit um, one of my favourite cards of all time, the Opus 6 Nidhogg, for free, just activates something in my brain. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we'll say 6.5 out of 10. Next up we have Orin. And Orin has all good abilities on him. If your opponent controls two more forwards, the cost required him uh, is two less, so when games kind of go long, he will become like a free CP. Um, and at the end of each player's turn, so that's key that's each player's turn, if Orin has received 4k damage or more, draw one card. And he has a zero effect of during this turn. The next damage dealt to you becomes zero, and you deal Orin 8k instead, only once per turn. So what this means is, he has kind of got that kind of Magissa synergy of you want to target him once or twice at small things just so you can get some drawback. You kind of, if your opponent is trying to attack in, if they overextend and don't kill him, you can get a card back. And being able to simply utilise his negate ability on damage is also quite good. And um, sometimes you don't want to take that damage. Um, one example would be uh, like the Opus 19 multi-element you stole from last set. You would be able to gain the haste um, off you stole ability because it's on attempt of taking the damage. You just would not be able to do the 4k ping um, from taking a, taking a damage. Because that ruling is it is zero Zero damage is not damage. So I'm struggling to figure out where I would put him. Um, specifically, I think just he's just a generally good mono fire card. Um, I just uh, there's nothing immediately that jumps out to me that goes, yes, he would fit in here. This is how I'd use him. He requires a little bit of subtle take Maybe having a little bit of self ping. Um. Or maybe utilise them with cards like, again, I, I mentioned Yustola being able to kind of save your, kind of Yustola haste for late game. Um, also being able to utilise them with Bash, the Fire Earth multi-element from, I believe it was Opus 18, um, who then gets the nice ability of not hitting the card you want to hit off of damage. That would be quite unfortunate. So yeah, he, he's like, a, I'm going to say a solid... 6 out of 10. There is not a bad line of cards, but it's just whether his kind of passive um, draw that's based on a condition will be good enough to kind of stamp out and make a mark. And yeah, that is just a stunning full art. So next up we have Ifrit, and I don't need to go on too much about this at Steve Spoiler. And we are really lucky to get it. It is a fantastic card. I like how it ramps up um, for the multiple characters. 
it being able to deal 10k or split 5k to two forwards of your opponent controls or even like 5k one of your car it's like Megisa or the previous Auron and deal 5k to another one of your opponents cards possibly line up a kill or just even just sniping something small like the new Rosa from this set honestly yeah it's an immaculate card couldn't really ask for much more now I am quite a big fan of this card just because it really helps you dig and play quite aggressively um, when Warrior of Light enters the field reveal the top four cards of your deck and you remove one card among them from the game this is mandatory and you return the other cards to the bottom of your deck and then for the rest of this turn you can cast it at any time so basically it's sadly locked this turn however it just allows you to kind of ramp out aggressively if you are playing this like turn one that then gives you the ability to look into like your next two turns and go what would i need to kind of start ramping out and playing at the very worst you're just going to get rid of maybe a dead draw that you would want you wouldn't want to see in the early game so he definitely plays for more aggressive mindsets and especially more decks it's kind of a i need to see something like this in the first two turns and essentially being a hopefully a quick can trip into it is never a bad thing um yeah he's a 5k body and he clashes with the absolutely amazing 4 cp warrior of light um he definitely could see plays in decks such as well i think more the kind of mono fire decks maybe even i guess is just a, an additional way of hopefully him ramping into that in like the first turn um definitely above average for a common i didn't give the if a rating that's a solid like eight and a half out of ten this i i think i'm going to give it a like six and a half seven out of ten next up we have garland and garland is a brave six cost ex knight with 9k power and on entry he will choose one forward your opponent controls and deal it 2k for each backup you control now if you keep seeing this compared to ash and i think the the one difference is this card does not care about what backups ash is only mono water against the exclusive to get both value this could be used in a knight's package and it doesn't care if you've got fire or water or even a light backup it will just deal damage for each of them i genuinely think it might only be good for like the opus 14 garland special or if we get a another a uh, card that utilizes garlands for specials in the future this card is great just because it's got that lovely ex burst in the corner it's a knight so it can search off going and stuff so it, it's got mild niches it'll be good and sealed because a hey, 9k on in, um, potentially 10k in entry will kill most things in this set so yeah it's a, a 5 out of 10 it isn't like really standard structured playable but it definitely does do good enough for me to consider wanting to play it in something like it's not a i would never touch this next up we have blacksmith a 4 cp standard unit from category 14 who when he enters the field until the end of the turn all forwards you control gain when the sword attacks choose one forward your opponent controls and deal at 7k this card has got a high ceiling because that is just a brutal effect of giving all your forwards um party attacking with multiple cards being able to go deal 7k a couple of stacks of 7k it's just brutal it is just the difficulty and the opportunity of using it because it is a backup you always have to you'd have to have like the backup sort of open for you to utilize it if you're not using the effect 4 cp is a big investment um it will be kind of cracked and sealed just being able to kind of help you power through but standard structured playable unless you kind of get like a 
standard unit FF14 searcher. I sorry. think I'm going to have to give this like a 4 out of 10. It's not actively bad, but it doesn't really scream at I need to be played. Next up we have the demon, and the demon... As soon as I saw the goddess spoiled, I thought that this was going to come. Now, he is a category 7... Sorry, he's a 7 cost, um, category 6 and Mobius. That is quite, always quite interesting to know, Job Warring Triad. Who, when he enters the field or attacks, you select one of the three following actions. Choose one forward, remove all cards in your opponent's break zone from the game, and deal it 1k for each card removed. Name one element, deal it 7,000 to all forwards of that named element. So that does, if you say fire, you will hit your own demon, just as a heads up. And then you have the name one job, deal 8,000 to all forwards of that named job. For fire, this gives you so much flexibility, and I think the biggest thing is it just gives the FF6 deck the real ability to actually have some hardcore removal outside of the Sabin loops. Um, I think that's something that really should be paid attention. Um, it also just, just gives you some great synergy of, you know what the worst? Like, just being able to rip apart your opponent's break zone. Um, that's just like another neat synergy you can switch between them and it's on it's basically it's I think the best comparison is Braska for the protection um, yeah this card is fantastic yes it is 7 CP but sometimes you just need to pay 7 CP and to warp and change the game Um He's hit quite a lot of right boxes, um, great category, um, great abilities, things that Fire didn't really have. So yeah, I can definitely see him being a staple. So he's going to get... I think he might be a 9 out of 10. Now going from a 9 out of 10 to probably a 2. Um, Kefka, when he enters the field, he has the very kind of more appropriate of removing three warring triad jobs with different names of your break zone, and then you place one magic counter on Kefka for each card removed due to stability. And then at the end of your turn, you may remove any number of magic counters from Kefka, and when you do so, choose up to the same number of forwards as the magic counters and deal them 9k. This card is too slow. You need to get different named warring triads because if you're only removing one, it's a bit kind of meh. 9k is, is powerful, but I, if it was 10k, it would have went, okay, you can kill a warrior light at the end of turn. Um, if it could remove warring triads when it wanted. If you could remove the magic counters at any point. it's It just had managed to like take all the wrong times. I'm also generally not a fan of a mana art. And yeah, this is not one of a man of finest like Shadow Dragon later on in the Lightning set of you. I'd go recommend check that out as well. But yeah, this card is a waste of a heroic. I genuinely do not see it seeing any play just because the how far spread apart all the warring triad is. You kinda want to run three so you can get the max amount in the graveyard for his effect and yeah, it just does not do anywhere near enough. Two out of ten. I hate it. Uh, Zach. Now Zach is really good fun. So he's a five cost category seven soldier. And when Zach attacks, you choose one of all your opponent controls and you deal it five K for each job soldier. Now for quick reference, um he can be searched by the four CP light cloud, which is a job soldier, a uh, restrictor um from Opus 4, the Lightning Civet Searcher, is also Job Soldier. Again, that's like kind of informing you how and where he could see some play. Um, and even the 2CP Cloud back at Opus 10, which isn't an amazing card, but, you know, could see some usage just because 
Here's a soldier. Dark cards are creeping back into the format. So, yeah, it's it's not hard for Zach to hit ten k on attack. But the I think the most interesting part of him is when Zach leaves the field, he may search for one category seven forward of cost four or less and play onto the field. Um, he also has special of. Uh, one copy of himself, fire and tap, deal 7k to all forwards your opponent controls. That's a nice bonus, it's not bad to have. But I think the, the biggest and exciting thing is Zack is leaving the field. So it's better than the break, standard break zone one, because if he gets straight RFG'd, if he gets a uh, bounce to hand, you still get to play a category 7 of cost 4 or less. And that has so many good cards. There's Aerith, there's Clouds, there's a new, if you're going to go down the ice route, that then kind of unlocks the Reno, Rude and Rufus kind of core, which are just nuts. Um, you have like the Ice Lightning Sephiroth. There is just so many great avenues for this guy to hit. He is just good. I kind of like the Fire Ice one because it also then gives you the fun play of targeting with Renoa, of being able to just flicker him. Because he's left field, you get to play one for deck, and then that allows you to then go get a cloud or a a different kind of really restock your hand for just really quick aggressive playing. Not so happy about paying five CP for nothing on entry, but because of his on attack triggers, the on X searching is category four forwards. Category 7 forwards, of course, 4 or less. Um, I definitely think he will see some play and people will really start kind of talking about the FF7 lists in some variety from him. Um, yeah, um, 7.5 out of 10, maybe an 8. I, I just don't think he's not got the absolute killer instinct, but there are absolutely zero bad ones on this card. Sammy and I, it's a cute reprint to keep crystals in, in L3 and L6 better. Um, yeah, we'll just go 5 out of 10. Does what they need to do, nothing new or exciting. Ject, um, Ject is a waste of a beautiful full art. Just look at that card. Um, Jex is a 5 cost category 10 guardian with 9k power and when he's put from the field to the break zone you may search one fire forward of cost 7 or more and play onto the field. That is totally not meant to play Braska's final Aeon for no reason in particular. In this set it can play the goddess but it's just a shame that in sealed that you need to get both Jex and a copy of the goddess. Um, yeah, This card just is too expensive. If, it, if he was cheaper, if it was, if he'd done something on entry as well, if he'd just done a bit more, he's just not really constructed playable. Um, a f 5 cost that Nengi that if it gets bounced, RFG'd, or just dull and frozen, has done nothing and achieved nothing. I, yeah, I just don't like it. Um, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10 because it's a rare, it's not taking up much. I don't hate it as much, but it just doesn't excite me. Goldsmith is fine fine and sealed for being able to buff your guys and give them brave. Help you go in the offense. Um, 2 CP, category 14 standard unit backup. And when it enters the field, choose one forward until the end of turn against 3k and brave. And you can tap, put Goldsmith into the break zone. Choose one forward until the end of turn against free game brave, and you can only choose this during your main phase, which is annoying. I'll be honest, but um, yeah, it, it, it's fine. It doesn't really excite me at all. It doesn't. I can't immediately think, "Oh, this will be good." Um, I'm gonna stick it in the the fours because it just does. It's a two CP backup. I don't think fire is lacking in quality two CP backups. Now we have Culinarian, which I'm more interested in too. Um, if you control three or more fire backups, the course to require to play Culinarian is reduced by two, so it comes a free backup. 
three backups are always good and I could see this in Monofire if they're just looking for like quick rampy cards like you're kind of running a backup line of like Geomancer, Dom Legs and then the Mew, uh, kind of like a small Mew package like I dreadfully sorry for that I realised I had left an alarm on um, yeah it being able to just be cast for free is always good I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 it doesn't do anything absolutely wild but it will certainly just be nice quick and rampy I think it's L3 playable massively but it could see some wider constructed play now we have Tifa and this Tifa is great for the one reason of it now removes any reason to play the Opus 1 to cost hasty Tifa because this just has more text, more power and yeah that, that just immediately does that. So 2 CP Tifa, um, category 7 avalanche operative with 5k power, haste and when a category 7 forward, a uh, category 7 character key part control deals damage to the forward, your opponent controls, choose one forward and it gains this forward cannot block and a special of one copy for self, fire and any one CP, um, choose one forward, deal at 8k. This is nice, hasty, aggressive, fun if you're running a lot of category 7 characters, you're going to take advantage of like any on entry abilities, being able to just really cut your opponent's chances of blocking, which really can help carve apart big boards. Um, her having a easy special of essentially discarding two cards to deal one forward 8k and causing another not to be able to block is never a bad thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it outranks if your avalanche options are coming back. It definitely does not outrank the Fire Earth Tifa. Um, if you you wouldn't play this over it, but maybe as a supplement, or just in general, a kind of a fire, a lightning or fire ice kind of FS seven deck. Perhaps if the previously mentioned Zach, it is going to be a great supplementary card. Um, two CP haste is never bad, and a good special and thing. So yeah, um, but oh, six and a half out of ten. It doesn't revolutionise the game, but it is not a bad card in the slightest. Next up we have Moro, and Moro is very sadly disappointing. It's a 3 CP EX forward um, for Gatti FFL with Adventure and Training job. Warp 2 for 1 CP with haste, and when he enters the field, or if hit into an EX first, um, sorry, when he enters the field due to warp, or an EX first, you draw two cards and then discard one. I'm giving this a 2 out of 10. I reserve 1 out of 10s for strictly the worst cards in the game. And this card, if it just had like the Aerith from this open deck of so winning the field due to abilities or summons, I think I could give him higher just of, okay, like he helps you kind of ramp out quickly. If that was a maybe a warp 1, warp 2 is just too long. He only getting the draw two, discard one due to warp is, yeah, kind of gammy. I want to like him, but I just can't. Next up is Barrett, and Barrett will be great in sealed, not so great in standard. He's a 3 CP avalanche operative from category 7 with an EX burst, and when he enters the field, choose on forward your opponent controls. Oh, it's actually just going to choose on forward, so you could deal with on forward something. And then you deal it 3k for each category 7 forward you control. He has a kind of a lower floor than the starter Barrett from Opus 10, like the one that Cloud Pod came in. But he, in return, oh, okay. has a lower ceiling because he only counts your forwards. Um, if you have two or three category 7 forwards, he will deal 9k and in sealed, that is enough. I don't think it is quite enough in constructed play. Um, a special of 
one copy of themselves and choose them forward and deal like 10k is solid but it has the massive downside of he will not activate during your next active phase which is kind of meh yeah he's going to get like a 3 out of 10 he doesn't inspire or do anything and he's not even like he's like even a mid maybe a 4 out of 10 he doesn't inspire anything beautiful Next up we have Palom and this has got a lovely full art. And when he enters the field you may pay a crystal. If you do so choose one forward and deal at 8k. And you can put one copy of Palom and Poro into the break zone. Choose one forward and deal at 10k. Now he's a 2 CP black mage from category 4. So um, again he'll combo in with the Cecil from this set. Um, and the Poro. Um, all good cards highly recommend checking out the water set review because they are very interesting um but what this card has compared to the kind of opus 15 uh, variant is that it's an immediate 8k which is something that other palo has to take a bit of time to set up um i do like that it can be any porum so being able to do silly stuff like play both this palo and like the opus 8 Porum, the one that the when it goes to the break zone add a summon to your hand be able to put that the other one deal a forward 10k and then bring back a summon i think it's fine it's definitely l3 and l6 playable it could see some play but i just feel like the the opus six wonder twins opus 15 wonder twins were just a little too good because of their ability to just kind of slowly snowball out of control. But it's not a bad card by any means. Um, I'm going to give it... Yeah, you're not, you get a 6.5 out of 10. Nothing bad. I just feel that it's slightly overshadowed. Um, but definitely has some L3 and L6 future. Now we have the Brooklyn Bird Phoenix. He's a 4 CP monster from category 7. 14, non multiplayable, just remember that in mind. So when he enters the field, he will deal 9,000 damage, and then at any point you can remove four cards from your break zone, and until the end of the turn, Phoenix becomes a forward with 9k power. I just wish it was 10k so it could have killed Warrior of Light. But it's kind of aggressively fine. Um key part is it's a choose one forward ability and it can hit your own forwards that's something you need to watch out for um yeah that forward being able to deal like dodge board removal is never a bad thing but he is just a little bit clunky and awkward i think they just slightly missed the mark on this heroic um i think it might have to be a four out of ten sadly um i wish it was better um the death of all colorblind players in 14 really should have had a bit more of a terrifying card but i just don't think it is constructed standard maybe a bit more in l3 where there is kind of a, a gap in hardcore removal now this is a card that i didn't expect to like but then went wow this is magisa gold hunter nance i hope you're watching so you can the kind of absolute go of Magisa in the, the Western kind of play sphere. Um, yeah, you're going to love this. So, Hedgehog Pie is a category 7 monster. Job Hedgehog Pie. Bart's is now Hedgehog Pie, obligatory. Um, and when he enters the field, you may discard one card, and if you do so, search for another copy of Hedgehog Pie and play it onto the field. And you can put any copy of Hedgehog into the Pie into the break zone and choose them forward and deal at 5k. Now, why is this card cool and interesting? Because you can ramp out a couple of Magisa pings like straight away. Like being able to set up like the next few turns for Magisa pings, or even just able to round out a kill, is I find that fascinating. I love it. And um, being able to kind of go on your turn one, go play Magisa. Play one copy of Hedgehog Pie, search a second copy. That's used up your 
all your cards in the hand, but then you get to do the first ping of Hedgehog Pie. You can play the Alpha Note and search whatever you want. And then you get to go during your opponent's turn, pop the second Hedgehog Pie and do another Magisa effect. Like, it just allows you to turbo out quite quickly. Also, due to being kind of characters that search other characters, it works really well with, like, the Luna from Opus 12. So, yeah. Um, anything that counts kind of, kind of, like, quick, rampy things. Also, being FS7 is low-key kind of cute. Um, so, yeah, I, I strangely rate this highly, so I'm going to give it a probably quite surprising 7 out of 10. I hope we get more Hedgehog Pies, just so we can search it like a fourth copy. But, yeah, never a bad thing. Next up we have Mont Blanc. It's another uh, Ryoma Ito masterpiece. Um, and funnily enough, he will fit to Gisa as well, but also just into general fire decks. So, 2 CP backup, Moogle, Job FFTA, Mont Blanc. So, when Mont Blanc enters the field, you choose one forward and you deal it 5k. Now, if you control 5 or more fire characters, unlike the Sid FFL, which a lot of people compared this to, um, you'll deal 8k. It's not just backups. So, again, like the Hedgehog Pies from earlier on, that would help you reach that 8k ping trigger. I think this is quite good. I mean, there's not many kind of 2cp 8k dealing cards. That's just kind of a good solid number for Magisa decks. Early, it can just be a, a bit of a backup diversity between your Porum and Zandi as a way of triggering Magisa. But then transferring into the late game is just a 2cp bit of removal. So yeah, I definitely like it. It does have a name clash with quite a lot of Mont Blancs. But um, it will definitely see some good play. I think it's a good supplementary card, so like a 6.5 out of 10. And the final card for Fire is Red 13. Now Red 13 is a 2 cost warrior from Category 7 with 9k power. Now you're required to control a Category 7 forward if you want to play him onto the field. That is a hard must. However, if you control four or more Category 7 characters, Red 13 gains haste. In Sealed, this will be quite easy to do, and you get a hasty 2 cost 9k. Nuts. In, in, in Sealed. In Standard, it definitely is the best card name Red 13 we've had. It's got quite a... Yeah, it definitely has a... A, a struggled history for playable cards, but I think uh, if you're playing a lot of FF7 characters, just a big, hasty 2 cost is never bad. Like, Ninge is, while it's sizable removal amounts, it does kind of help you claw back into the game with just something that can turn and swing from Ninge. It puts a lot of pressure. Um, I think I'm going to give it the kind of 5.5. It is just a fine card, it's not a supplementary card even for like most decks, but it will do a good job um, in the FS6 list, the FS7 list, so it's just maybe a, a one-off of I am big and hasty and I am going to poke you for damage. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a wonderful set. Tell me in the comments who you're looking to pull and I shall hopefully see you again in the future. Bye-bye.